How can the religious convince others on social media? Frank Turek has the answer, but it's not the answer that you'd think. Let's take a look. I've looked at Christian Tactics videos before, most notably the Stands Against Reason crowd, but I thought it would be interesting to see how Frank Turek fields a very similar question. So let's see what Frank thinks about sharing the Christian message on social media, and why, as always, Frank is just laughable. He gets so close to the truth, and then pulls away, because admitting to the facts will make people feel bad. But what else is new? Frank, a question came in. I thought this would be good for you. They asked, uh, how can I best uh, share the gospel, have apologetic arguments, defend my faith on social media? Yes, Frank. Please tell us how to best share the gospel with people who have the whole of human knowledge at their fingertips and who can look up all of your claims and see where you're wrong. You can't. <laughs> well, at least he's honest. Of course, he'll try to spin it so that it doesn't look like Christianity is a lost cause, but at least he acknowledges that there's no way, especially with skeptics, to make religion look like anything but an irrational train wreck. So, go ahead, Frank. Spin away. I don't, know what's, I don't know what it is with social media, but it's almost like you're driving your car and everybody else is wrong but you. It's the same thing on social media, right? People cannot be gracious on social media. Uh, they can't be kind on social media. Uh, I have a rule that if I get an email or I see something on social media that I'm upset with, step away from the computer. While that might be true for a lot of things, that doesn't actually change anything. And he said that on social media, everyone but you is wrong, which I think describes religion just fine. Because everyone thinks their beliefs are the right ones, and everyone else, at least where their beliefs vary from yours, have to be wrong. And that's a ridiculous way of looking at the world. You are right, only so far as your beliefs agree with the best evidence available. Where they disagree, you are wrong, at least provisionally, until evidence that supports your side comes along. But the religious don't think that way. Now, maybe they ought to be willing to step away when they find out that the things they believe aren't actually true, but I think we all know that doesn't happen. They ought to go think about it and research the actual truth, but that's not emotionally comforting, is it? Give it five minutes at least, maybe an hour then have a more measured response. Have a more rational response. Do not jump in emotionally. Now, as with lots of apologists, Frank is really close to the truth if he had the capacity to step back and think about it, but he doesn't. He says something that is reasonable, but never takes that additional stride forward and realize that it applies to his side's beliefs. We in our ministry don't do a lot of interaction on social media like trying to answer objections jim always says you can't answer an objection 140 characters right you know frank there's more social media than just twitter but this is why so many apologists make their social media presence strictly one way they speak others listen others can't speak back because i think they know that if there was true two-way communication going on they'd get slaughtered. You need more than that, but what we do do is put out these short Q&A videos, and of course, Ravi is brilliant at that as well. Those Q&A videos from the college campus, mm. as I said earlier, you send somebody a video of 45 minutes, they're not gonna look at it, but you send them a four minute Q&A video, they're gonna, they're gonna look at it, and that opens the door to other conversations. Conversations that can't happen when your communication is monodirectional. And I think that's why you get a lot of this on YouTube, because on YouTube, the creator says what they want to say, and then they decide if they want to listen to what is said in response. Even if comments are open, that doesn't mean the creator actually reads or responds or engages with their audience. They don't have to answer objections if they don't want to.
So I would be very cautious on social media. I would, I, in fact, if you're on social media and you think you may, you may have a, a, an in with somebody, it's much better to say, hey, do you mind if we take this conversation to a phone call or to an email? Mm -hmm. That way people don't have all that pride associated with having to rebut what you just said. Or you having to rebut what they just said. And you don't have an audience watching you get your theological ass handed to you. That's why he wants people to do things privately, so that they only have to make a fool of themselves in front of an audience of one, not a whole group. They're more open to a conversation. So you're saying no one's going to come up and say, you know, I really came to faith in Christ because you argued with me on Facebook. <laughs> well, maybe if they're leaning in. If they're already convinced but certainly not if they have serious questions and concerns about the things you're saying and expect you to back up your claims with evidence. And that's why on social media, you tend to get these little insular groups that try to keep out the riffraff that might make those groups members feel bad. But honestly, the kind of conversations that you ought to have are with the non-believers, with the active skeptics. I don't spend my time in this channel debating other atheists. I spend it going after the religious. I don't need a secular circle jerk. I want serious conversations with people who believe things that I think are completely indefensible. I want to put them on the spot. I want them to back up their claims. They never can, but they ought to be able to if their beliefs are worth holding in the first place. Yeah. Right? If Jim got him to third base, you might be able to bring him home. Okay. That's but no, cool. it's, it's, it's hard to do, I think. It yeah. really is. It absolutely is hard to do, but not for the reasons you want to believe. It's hard because your side has nothing to present. You have no evidence, no logical, rational, or critical arguments, and your opponents have the entire internet at their fingertips that they can use to shred everything you have to say. It's no surprise that you don't want to be sitting in a very public place making a fool of yourself in front of dozens if not hundreds of people. It's the same reason Frank doesn't go out and talk to college atheist groups or debate the non-religious in an arena setting. Because in anything resembling a fair and neutral setting, the religious get slaughtered. They have nothing that will convince the skeptics, and the skeptics can point out how empty the claims of the faithful actually are. Even if the religious don't want to admit that they are getting intellectually trounced, they still are, and everyone but the most fanatical knows it. And I think Frank here knows it too. That's why he does what he does, and why he gives the advice that he gives. Because the longer he can keep his flock from facing the withering light of reality, the longer they will keep dumping money in the collection plate and keep paying his honorariums. Because that's really what all this is about. Money. And power. And control. It's never about truth. Think about that.